The Nigeria Center for Disease Control and, the Preven and Prevention has activated the National Cholera Multisectorial Emergency Operations Center in response to escalating cholera cases in the country. During a briefing in Abuja, the Director General of uh, NCDC, Dr. Jide Idris, announced that as of June the 24th, uh, there have been 1,528 suspected cholera cases and 53 deaths across the 31 states and 107 local government areas with a case fatality rate of 3.5% since the beginning of the year. He said a recent dynamic risk assessment by experts from various ministries, departments, agencies, and partners classified Nigeria as being at high risk for increased cholera transmission and impact, necessitating the activation of the National Cholera Multisectoral Emergency Operations Center. The EOC will coordinate response efforts nationwide, support affected states, facilitate rapid communication and decision-making, and mobilize resources and expertise. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Environment has advised Nigerians to avoid locally made drinks such as kunu, zobu, and fura to prevent cholera. Joining us in the studio is public health expert, publisher, health maker, Tui Meibawandu. Good morning to you. It's good, good morning. To you. Join us. Now, the federal government has said, don't drink kunu, tiger don't nuts. drink tiger nut or zobu. I'm wondering uh, what will be the alternative for you people wonder. now. Uh, but then, let's come to the critical issue where Nigeria has been described as, as being a high risk for increased cholera transmission. Break that down for us. Um, well, basically, for you to have cholera, two conditions must be fulfilled. Hmm. One, the jam must be in, the, in your community, okay? Right, so people are carrying the jam. So the jam must be in the community. Secondly, there must be a breakdown in water, sanitation, and hygiene. Mm. When, you, when those two conditions are fulfilled, cholera will surface. Um, it's no doubt that um, if you look at our trajectory, you know, um, water supply, sanitation, hygiene, we have big issues um, on those areas. Um, you see, uh, access to water, it's just barely, clean yeah, clean water. Just barely 19% of Nigerians have access to clean water mm -hmm. to drink. So the rest, actually, we have to dug, dig a hole or actually look for surface water anywhere to drink. Um, we still present ourselves as the number two um, open defecation center of the world. You know, um, 60 million, more than 60 million people, that's 6 million households. Mm. They poop anywhere they see. So, and when you poop anywhere you see, when you don't have source of water, when you don't wash your hands, um, indeed, and you, there are slums, gutters, sanitation hygiene are not being taken proper note of. Mm. Of course, cholera will come. The rain will help you by washing all the waste you put on the road, you put everywhere, and wash it to your source of water supply. Contaminate your food. Contaminate your fruits. Uh, mess up your water source and your environment. So it's obvious, not just cholera, that other waterborne diseases will also, you know, show face. Mm -hmm. And the, for me, the most concerning aspect of it is that whenever we're sending warnings about rain, that flood may come, this may come, your property may be damaged, we're not talking about the health implications mm. of, of rainfall or flooding, which will take dirt, which will take germs, which will, you know, implicate a lot of things as far as health is concerned. And lo and behold, we're here, cholera again, you know, um, endemic here, you know. Um, Has Nigeria you know, ever been a high-risk high um, location for cholera before now? No, you know, cholera entered Nigeria in 1972, there about, as an import. Uh, between 72 and, killed a lot of people, but between 72 and 90, 90, uh, 1991 were good. But after that, subsequently, we start seeing, you know, um, episode of cholera epidemic. Cholera is now endemic in Nigeria. Mm. Cholera is endemic. People are carrying the germs. Fortunately, as much as 80% of people that with the germs, that contact the germs will not fall sick. But the trend that falls sick, and cholera is very contagious, you know. Mm. It has to be orophica, you know, um, from your 
from the feces to mouth, you know, or from hand to mouth. That is how it, it comes. Either your fruits, your water, your food. That is it. So, in a way, we were not the main epicenter of cholera before, because if you look at all the eight pandemics that have happened during in, in the world, I mean, in the past 100 years or thereabout, all of them came from India. Mm. Okay? I came from India, India sent, and then takes all over, uh, takes it around the world. But now, India is trying to get itself right. The other part of the world is trying to get themselves right. But we cannot still address the challenge of water, sanitation, mm -hmm. hygiene. Our mm -hmm. gutters are open, waters are flowing, people are selling food by the roadside. There's no access to hand washing. We're not even teaching the hand washing as, a, as actually, you know, a, a proper health intervention, you know. We have cholera. We can say all of these things about um, cholera. We can try to get vaccines um, from uh, world bodies to address this. But the issues are still at hand. How can we address these issues when um, open defecation, like you mentioned, the second, Nigeria's second uh, center, world center, for open defecation, that's a huge demand marketing for Nigeria. Um, so how do we address all of these issues? Because we still see this open defecation happening. It's been happening over time, and now it has become worse. We still go to markets and see that um, people still handle food stuff with dirty hands, and it's still there. How do we address this kind of situation vis-a-vis -vis the fact that we do not have pipe-borne water? Uh, for me, I, I understand the activation of emergency operation centers to mm. coordinate, to get information, to move resources to address a disease. I think um, essentially it should be more active locally, I mean, at the level of the local government. Because if you're talking about how to take care of the gutters, how to take care of the market, how to take care of the garages, how to ensure that toilets and ratings are everywhere, it happens at the level of the local government. Now, um, if you're, if, let's say you're on the road, you're driving in this Lagos, and you suddenly, you suddenly feel so pressed, you virtually not have a place to, you know, to ease yourself. Mm. But what we can do, these things are quite very simple. The thing is this, we have, uh, um, you know, restaurants and food centers. We have gas stations along the road. You know, those ones should actually be supported to be able to provide a place where you can, you know, branch off and then even tell people that they can branch off and use those things whenever they are pressed along the road. Then, you know, our garages need to actually be looked into, you know, that's, you know, because just back there you see everybody, you know, drinking, all sorts of things, and then, Defecating openly at the back somewhere there. Our markets, in fact, it is, should be a, 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 a clear criteria that if you don't have a proper latrine and toilet in your market, your market needs to close down. Mm. We need to emphasize that. We may have to actually bring down the, the, the local government um, sanitary inspectors to look at the, uh, the gutters are just, they are in a mess. Yeah. Open, we go back dirty. to monthly sanitation. No, that is monthly sanitation. What would that do? How can you, how can you postpone cleaning, cleaning your environment to have to wash them out? No, it's a daily sanitation. It's a daily sanitation. Okay, um, whereby, you know, you have the CDAs, you have the lo local people who can actually, in, you know, interface with people and look at what do we do in this regard. We must be able to do an assessment in each of the localities of how much of this um, uh, public toilet that we need, how do we run it, effectively and efficiently. I agree that there are challenges of water, you know, how do you use water to actually run those things, but we have to actually factor that in and start honestly deploying those public latrines everywhere so yeah. that we end open defecation. Of course, the lowest part, the, the cheapest thing we can do is all this information we, we discuss. Every time we have to, you come, I mean, your TV television station, you know, discuss issues, issues, issues. But unfortunately, people want to listen to skits. You want to watch skits and all those things. They're not interested in how they are healthy. Well, perhaps yeah. we need to start employing these influencers, mm -hmm. social media influencers, as a way of educating these things. That is where a majority of persons who pay attention. At, because education, from all you have said now, creating awareness and educating people is critical to addressing this matter. And so we need to look at every way we can educate people. If skit is the way to go about it, why not? Yeah, okay, I agree. There could be health skits, why not? That actually will change people's opinions and actions in respect to health. Um, that also, government has a lot to do. Okay, um, 
over the weekend, that was, okay, that was just last week, um, I had to take a boat, you know, with some group of people, um, one of the governments, uh, European government needed to do something in the local communities and along the river coast of Ekwe. So we took a boat from VI and then, you know, down, down to those villages, we entered those villages. Um, we're not doing enough in those villages, but of course, some of us will try to do something, which is part of what we're doing. It, it is when you're on, on, that, on water like that that you see the, the mess that the whole mm. of Lagos is. Okay, then you see all the deaths, you know, mm. you know, abutting the so-called biggest states. You mm. look at it and wonder what is what's all this. But but we see some level of effort the state government has done in deploying some persons who clean clean up the roads and you know basis. on a daily basis. But we, co we commend them that we can do better. What I'm saying <coughs> is that you know um, look at the median. Just go through the media. You see dirt. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, when they scoop up. The, the, the remnant from the gutter, the thing goes back to the mm -hmm. gutter after some time. So we, we can do more. Mm. We can do more. First and foremost, more than 100, 100 years, more than 100 years, 200 years, we've not seen the case of cholera. It's some, country, it's some countries in Europe. What we need to do is simple thing. Where is the water supply? Where is the water source? Why should everybody be relying on borehole? Why can't we pipe water? Of course, we need electricity. But of course, I can tell you that water is even more, more essential than electricity. We need to get water to people to drink. In fact, that's what uh, actually WHO uh, and uh, UNESCO uh, prescribe, that uh, the government needs to do more at ensuring supply of portable water to homes as it is to addressing look, look, look this at, matter. Look, look, at, look at the school children now. I, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't see any reason why we shouldn't have... Uh, uh, Hand washing porters, you know, at strategic place in every school, mm. and whereby you know, you know, because for us now at this level, yes, government is activating emergency operations center, which is fine. Okay, we, you have to respond now mm -hmm. with those number of people dying, and then case fatality of three point five percent. That's a lot. So, apart from that, you must be able to do your personal hygiene, you must be able to do your food hygiene mm. and environmental hygiene. You know, personal hygiene, your hand washing whenever you are putting your food table. Also, make sure that you wash your hand. When you go out and you're coming in, you wash your hand. You know, before you, you enter your vehicle now, you just try to find a way to swipe your hand. Mm. You use your hand sanitizer. Just your hand. Just that hand. Yeah, I know it's good for prayer, but it's not for prayers alone. Wash it now. Mm. I mean... Okay, so what, what, what would you say are the symptoms to look out for? And at what point should one just dash out to the hospital when you see those symptoms? Cholera is, 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 is a very devastating illness. Um... Now, 80% of people that have contacted the jam may not show signs or symptoms. Those little things, and then your body can deal with it. Mm -hmm. But your body is compromised. In Nigeria, generally, we have as much as we're about the second in malnutrition in the world. So your ability to actually fight the jams is limited, okay? Because you are, you are, the, most of the, the vulnerable groups are really, really malnourished, mm -hmm. okay? That's number one. So what, those, it's those dependent. Cholera is those dependent. If you take sufficient dose and it enters your body, first of all, try to block it by using the acid to kill a lot of them. Then, mm. once they enter into the, once they call the germs enter into the tummy, the first thing is that you have few hours to about five days as incubation period. After oh. that, stooling, stooling, vomiting, and abdominal cramps. Those three things. When you see stooling, vomiting, and abdominal cramps, why cramps? Because actually, the toxin being produced will cause those cramps in mm. your muscle, cramps in your mm. tummy. You know, and just cramps in the muscle. So, stooling, vomiting, and cramps. And that's why, you know, in those days they needed two bowls, you know, one in front, one here to collect the weight. And of course, as, the, as those water, everything is going away from the body, the next thing is that the person will now feel weak before you know it, death. In a very, very fast, very, very fast, once you lose those water. So, you are used to lean. By the time you do one, two, because of course, you know your normal habit. Mm. Maybe really you stool once in a, uh, in a day, and you now find that you're going to be coming three, four times. Watch out. Mm. Watch out. And then Whether it's watery you, or not. You watch out. Mm. Because it will first start as if it's not watery, then it becomes watery. And, you, and the, classical, the classical thing is like, like rice water. You know, the rice, water on top of rice. Mm. You, know, you know, it will just be foreign. Mm. Um, because it's the body's foot that attempt to excrete the germs. You know, so... So please, if 
you don't have anything, but, but, and also part of the education should be, uh, people should be taught at, the, at that level of community how to prepare uh, water solutions, thought sugar solution. Okay. So that, that helps. We, it helps because you have to replace the water. If you can replace the water sufficiently and you can defeat right. the body in the ex excretion of the water, it will be okay. Okay. And more importantly, guys, we have to actually do more. About Prevention. our health. We All have right. to do more about our health. We have to leave the conversation here now because our time is up to Ime Bamadu, public health expert, publisher, health maker.